call from Cat Hogan. An inmate at the 41 the County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balances $52.85. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the calls to... This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Alright, brother, Psalm 827, you said, huh? 80, 82.6, 82.6, and uh, here's, here's the question specifically. Uh, Fernando writes, my question is about Psalm 82.6 that says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you, all of you are children of the Most High. And Jesus confirmed it in John 10.34, where he says, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? So my question is that is if it is okay to say we are gods. I know some atheists said they are gods, but they say that with a different purpose. But from Christian perspective, is it okay to say we are gods by the fact that we are his children made in his image? Question mark. Interesting question. Don't have a complete answer, but if you look at the beginning of that psalm, verse 1, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods, small g. It's a small g. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah means stop and think about it. So I think there's probably been a lot of sermons preached on this question you're asking, and I don't, I don't have a complete answer, but in, in the sense of a small g, gods, well, God has given us, uh, we are certainly above the plants and animals and rocks, and, uh, and it probably goes back to the stupidity of the evolution theory. Uh, for, anyway, so, yeah, the, Jesus did quote that. Did I say you are gods? Uh, they were they were trying to get Jesus. They were trying to stone him for claiming to be God in that passage, and so he used that as a way out of a stoning because uh, he knew he had to die by crucifixion. His blood had to be shed, and that was coming later. His ministry wasn't done. So don't know. Good question. Uh, but notice it's a small G. I think it's just an expression. It has nothing to do with it. Can, by definition, there can only be one God. There can't be two gods. There, there has to be an authority uh, structure here. So there's only one God, capital G. This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> Thank you. That's more of a question for a theology book, I guess. Someone who writes a theology book might have an answer, more a complete answer for that one. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pastor Hovind. The next question comes in from Dar Dario. And Dario, I think, had written a previous question about is it possible the Antichrist will pose as an alien? But he writes this morning... Hi, Rudy. Thanks for asking, for asking Dr. Hoven my question. To clarify, I do not believe in aliens, but I think it could be possible that the Antichrist will appear that way in order to confuse people. Anyway, I've got two more questions if you'd like. Uh, number one, why is it important for Christians to believe in a young earth? I tell every old earth believing Christian what I've learned from your videos, and almost always I get the answer that they don't find it important enough to care. What can I say to them in order for them to care about this topic, which I myself find so important? Well, you might ask them a couple questions. If you read Matthew 19, 4, and Mark chapter 10, verse 6, the parallel passage, you will see that Jesus very clearly taught that the creation of Adam and Eve was the beginning of the creation. Okay. If the creation of Adam and Eve was the beginning of the creation, we know anybody can add up the numbers found in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11, and you're all going to come to the same conclusion. The Bible teaches the earth was created approximately 4,000 B.C. or 6,000 years ago. So the question is very simple. Was Jesus lying when he said the creation of Adam and Eve was the beginning? Or was he stupid? Or was he right? I don't see any other options. So really when someone says the earth is millions of years old, you have to ask them the question, what do you need these millions of years for? And were there people at the very beginning? They'll say, oh no, there were no people. Okay, well then Jesus was lying. Because Jesus said the creation of Adam and Eve was the beginning. That's one simple reason. Secondly, God wrote on the, the only thing God wrote on a stone was when he did the Ten Commandments and handed it to Moses. 
And one of those commandments we see in Exodus 20, verse 11, and again he talks about it in Exodus 31, verse 17, that God made everything in six days. That would include man, that would include dinosaurs, that would include everything. So the question is very simple. Was God lying, or was God stupid, or was God right? Did he actually create everything in six days like it says? So there's two simple reasons why it's important. A third reason might be that the Bible says clearly that nothing died until Adam sinned. Man brought death into the world. We see that in Romans chapter 5 and again in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The reason there's death and suffering on planet Earth is because of man. Did God create a world with death and suffering? Were the lions eating the zebras in the Garden of Eden and God saw that that was very good? Is a world with death and suffering like that, is that considered a very good? Uh, I think uh, Romans 5 and uh, 1 Corinthians 15 would make it clear that no, it was man's disobedience that brought death into the world. So if your friend wants to have millions of years, ask him the question, was there any death and suffering before man got here? If so, then why did Jesus die on the cross? If death and suffering is perfectly normal and, and, and considered good for the lion to eat the baby zebra, okay, then what's the purpose of Christ's death on the cross if not for man's sin? So the idea of death before sin really calls into question the purpose of Jesus' life. Uh, anyway, those would be three things I would ask him. Okay, hope that helps, brother. All right, no, thank you, Pastor Hoven. Um, the next question from Dario, uh, he writes, If you only had five minutes with someone, uh, what would you say to convince them that the earth is only 6,000 years old? Thanks again for your dedication, praying for your soon release, and yes, we would love to have you preaching here in Switzerland. Kind regards, Dario. Well, thank you, Dario. If I only had five minutes. Hmm. Well, there are two totally different approaches. I would kind of see which one is needed at the time. There's the spiritual, the biblical approach. You can simply, you can show easily from the Bible that the earth is only 6,000 years old. So I tell people, okay, there's a biblical side to this. Now, there's also a scientific side to this. So whichever one they need. If they say they believe the Bible, okay, well, then let me show you what the Bible says. Like I just mentioned, nothing died till Adam sinned, and the dates add up to 6,000. Anybody can add them up. Uh, so... The Bible clearly teaches that. If they don't care what the Bible says, then you take the scientific approach. And there are all kinds of things I cover in my seminar part one called the age of the earth. Different what are called geochronometers of time to show that this earth cannot be billions of years old. I use the illustration in my book, um, on my seminar notebook that goes along with my seminar about if you find a watch in a, in a, in a, gold, in a, in a coal mine or a gold mine or something, and you sit buried in the mud, and you say, wow, this watch has been here for 4,000 years. You say, well, someone says, wait, that's impossible. This mine was not even dug until 25 years ago. Well, just that simple fact uh, proves the 4,000-year claim to be wrong. And you know the watch has to be less than 25 years old. And then someone points out, hey, this brand of watch wasn't even made until 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Now, I still don't know when the watch was left. But I know it's, uh, since you're from Switzerland, watches would be a good illustration, by the way. Uh, so I know it's less than 10 years ago because of those two simple facts. So someone can claim that watch has been there for 4,000 years, but you can easily refute that claim with two simple scientific facts. That company didn't exist and the mine wasn't dug. Now that still doesn't tell you the exact date the watch was left, but it does narrow it down. There are all kinds of scientific ways to narrow down the age of the Earth to less than the billions that they claim. And that's what I do in my video number one. For instance, the spin of the Earth is slowing down, the moon is going farther away, the sun is burning out, uh, all kinds of various things. The mountains are eroding into the oceans with landslides, mudslides, mass wasting, ground creep, etc. So, the oceans are getting saltier as salts come in, and it's a big distillation pond. But the sediments in the ocean, uh, they're just the dust on the moon. There are many, many, many indicators, probably a hundred. You might want to check some of the websites like icr.org or answersingenesis.org or creationscience.com. There are many good creation sites that deal with some of these uh, geochronometers. So, all right, hope that helps, brother. 
All right. Thank you, Pastor Hoven. Very good. Uh, the next question comes in from Joe, and Joe writes, Hello, Pastor Hoven. My name is Joe. I very much hope you are not in jail to receive this question. <laughs> uh, my goodness. If so, I wanted to ask you about the programmed cell death, uh, apoptosis, of the human body in the Garden of Eden, Eden environment. Today, in a healthy adult human, millions of cells in the body die and are replaced every hour. In order for people to live for hundreds of years, cells must have lasted longer and been much more sturdy. Pre-flood, was it the combination of better genetics plus an environment that allowed for this? Do you think that dis disease began to ravage mankind just after the flood? Thanks in advance and really looking forward to any of your future work. God bless you, Pastor Hoven. Well, thank you. Uh, Chow just arrived here, uh, Rudy. Let me, after your radio program, let me call this afternoon, and I'll deal with that one. That's an interesting question. It needs, it needs a longer answer. Okay, okay Pastor Hovind. I, I hope to let you out soon, if, if not today. But uh, if you're in there, we're, we are continued. We will continue to do Bible questions. It's a real blessing, but we hope we can uh, soon see you free. All right. Thank you, brother. God bless. Bye-bye. All right, that's Pastor Hoven, uh, still in prison, even though all charges are dropped. Should have been in home confinement back in February. Absolutely incredible he's still in prison. Uh, we need to find out uh, from the U.S. Marshals Department, uh, and let me find their number. I believe their number, at least one of their numbers, is 850-469-8270. 850-469-8270. That's one of the numbers I have for the U.S. Marshals Department, and I'm going to spend the rest of the day when, when we're not doing Bible questions and I don't have other commitments uh, calling the U.S. Marshals Department, finding what is going on and what's the plan for Pastor Hoven and how come you guys can't just let him go home? 